Welcome to Electra Online. You might remember in the past that you've done some what we call acid-base titration reactions where we add an acid and a base together to neutralize the solution so that the pH after you add enough from one from the acid and the base together that the pH will be equal to zero. So they call that a neutralization reaction. Well we can do kind of the same thing what we, with what we call a redox reaction or an oxidation reduction reaction. We can put a reducer together with an oxidizer, and if we put the right quantities of each together, they will cancel each other out and basically be neutralized, that they no longer have the capacity to either oxidize or reduce. Same kind of concept. So what we want to do there is kind of keep track of how many electrons are exchanged. So the basic idea there is that if the proper number of electrons are exchanged, the oxidation reduction reaction is complete, and there's no longer an ability to oxidize or reduce. So let's say that in this particular example, <clears throat> excuse me, we have a 17 milliliters of a 0.1 molar uh, potassium uh, permanganate, and it's needed to oxidize 25 milliliters of iron sulfate solution in an, in an acidic solution. So there's plenty of uh, what we call free hydrogen uh, ions available. And so we were trying to guess what the molar concentration of the iron sulfate is so that they will neutralize each other. So again, it all comes down to exchanging the proper number of electrons so that both the oxidizer and the reducer are no longer capable of oxidizing and reducing. So here's the basic reaction. So you have iron sulfate and potassium permanganate, and then they will then be disassociated because of the acidic solution into potassium ions, iron ions, sulfate ions, manganese ions, and of course now we still have oxygen remaining, and we'll see in just a moment what we need to do there to equalize that oxygen. Uh, first of all, we have one iron here, we have one iron there, so that's good. We have one sulfate ion, one sulfate ion here, that's good. One potassium, one potassium, one manganese, one manganese, so far so good. We have four oxygens here, so probably what we want to do on the right side is add four waters, so plus four H2Os. So now we've balanced the oxygen, but now we have eight hydrogens, so probably on this side we want to add eight hydrogen ions, like that. All right, so now the equation is at least balanced for all the elements. Now let's take a look and see which atoms are being reduced and which atoms are being oxidized. So here you can see that iron starts at 2 plus and becomes 3 plus over here. So here I can see that, yes indeed, the iron is being reduced. Oh, not reduced. In this case, it's being oxidized. Sorry about that. So what we can see here is that went from plus 2 to plus 3, so that's uh, uh, plus 1. Uh, then on the other hand, uh, let's see here, we have manganese, that's at plus 7 here, and manganese, that's at plus 2 here. So manganese is being reduced, and so we can say that's a minus 5 for the manganese. All right, for that to be balanced, for the oxidation reduction to be balanced, it looks like we're going to need five of these to balance out one of those, because for each mole of potassium permanganate, we exchange five electrons, for each uh, uh, iron sulfate being uh, oxidized, we only exchange one electron, so that means we need to multiply this times 5 to have a plus 5 exchange here that balances out the minus 5 exchange there. Of course, if we need 5 of them, that, mean, that means we need 5 moles of this, and we need 5 moles of that. Okay, so now at least from an oxidation reduction perspective, the, equations is, the equation is balanced. Now I believe we're ready to solve the problem. Because what it comes down to is that we want the number of electrons, the number of electrons on one side to equal the number of electrons uh, of electrons on the right side. That's really what it comes down to. So how many electrons do you contribute with the potassium permanganate? Well, that, that comes in uh, the amount of volume, and let's call uh, potassium permanganate, let's call that item number one, and let's call... Uh, iron sulfate item number two. So for item number one, to calculate all the electrons that are being exchanged from one direction to another, we take the volume of item number one, the number of electrons exchanged for item number one, so we'll do sub one here, times the molarity for item number one. So notice that if there's twice as much volume, you're going to have twice as much electrons. If you have twice the molarity, you're going to have twice the number of electrons. So simply keeping track on the left side of how many electrons are being exchanged uh, for, uh, in this case, ion number one, which is potassium permanganate, right there, right there. 
and that has to balance the number of electrons being exchanged by the iron sulfate. So again, we need the volume of iron sulfate times the number of electrons being exchanged for iron sulfate times the molarity of, uh, oh, and this is of course subitem 2, so subitem 2, uh, times the molarity of iron sulfate. And after all, this is what we're looking for, right? They're asking us to find the molarity of iron sulfate. And all we have to do is solve this equation algebraically, which means we're going to take these two items, bring them over there, turn the equation around, which means that the molarity of item number two, and of course item number two is the iron sulfate, is going to be equal to the volume of item number one, that's the potassium permanganate, times the number of electrons exchanged by the potassium permanganate, times the molarity of the potassium permanganate, divided by the volume of the iron sulfide, uh, sulfate, times the number of electrons exchanged uh, by the iron sulfate. There we go. So volume one, so we have 70 milliliters, multiplied times the number of electrons being exchanged by the, uh, um, Let's see, where are we here? Ah, by the uh, potassium permanganate, I had a moment of lapse there, but notice that one mole exchanges five electrons or five charges, so that's times five, times the molarity of um, number one, which is right here, 0.1 for the potassium permanganate, 0 0.1 molar. Okay. We divide that by the volume of the iron sulfate, which is 25 milliliters, times the number of electrons exchanged by the iron sulfate per mole. And one mole exchanges just one electron, so this would be times one. And that should give us the molarity required for the iron sulfate. And you expect to be, it to be a higher molarity because you need to transfer five electrons total and you only get one per mole. That means you need a stronger solution or more, or more of it in order to make that happen. So we have 17. Uh, times 5 times 0.1 divided by 25 divided by 1, which is 0 0.34. So that's the molarity required of the iron sulfate in order to balance out the 0.1 molar solution of potassium permanganate uh, when you have 17 milliliters of it. So 25 milliliters of 0.34 molar of iron sulfate will neutralize the potassium permanganate. And that is how you do it. And this is really the best way to think about it. It's simply the number of electrons exchanged total. The number of electrons given off by one is equal to the number of electrons received by the other. And notice that you set the number of electrons on each side of the equation. The volume, because the more volume you have, the, the more number of electrons you have to exchange. And the higher the molarity, the more electrons you have to exchange. And so when you set those two equations equal to each other, or the two sides equal to each other to form that equation, then you can solve for any one of the unknowns. In this case, the unknown was the molarity of the uh, iron sulfate. And that's how you do that.